what I'm going to the hospital for. Right then and there, y'all could have got a DNA test done on that day. Why didn't Mish call? Why is she going through you all the time? She's a grown woman. You right. Why Excuse did she me? go through me? But y'all don't, don't about like every me. Y'all hate me. If you with your child, you be a woman about it. So when I walk to the car, I hear the noises and I knock on the window and she blatantly give me the look like, and so what? You, you see what I'm doing? Cheating. So your wife right. was having sex with another man in a car out front of your house? Yeah. Found out that she cheated on me through text message that she had in her phone, <laughs> people on Craigslist, you know, incriminating messages, something that should never, ever been. We weren't together. It doesn't we matter. Were not, no, even it when we worked we together. Even when we were together. together. That makes All right, here's the scoop. Ms. Brogdon rolls up in court with a mission to prove Ms. Jones's late son Tyrell's the daddy of her little one. Quamira, she's all, once the DNA drops the truth bomb, I'll better step up for my baby. Ms. Brogdon shares her struggles as a solo mama bear to a kiddo who barely knows her pop's side of the fam. In court to prove to Ms. Jones and her daughter that her deceased son Tyrell Jones fathered your one-year-old daughter, Quamira. You say once the DNA proves your case, Ms. Sugden, you say without a doubt that your brother did not father Ms. Brogdon's daughter. You say the stress of her accusations made your mother greatly and is preventing her from healing after the loss of her son. Boom. Plot twist. Ms. Sugden, Tyrell's sis, throws shade, claiming Ms. Brogdon played the field with not one, but two brothers. Courts all ears, trying to untangle this paternity pretzel. Ms. Brogdon slaps back, denying the baby daddy drama. Just when you think it can't get any spicier, it does. I don't think that's my brother's baby. I don't. Why? Tamisha, first of all, slept with two of my brothers. So that's what left me like, I can't trust anything she says, honestly. I mean, she slept with, with two of my brothers. And that's true, Ms. Brogdon? Yes, Your Honor. But you're in court saying that Tyrell is your daughter's father. He potentially be the child's father too? No, Your Honor. I heard otherwise. Things get real. Ms. Jones and Ms. Sugden grill Ms. Brogdon about whether Tyrell really wanted to be a dad, thinking she only named him after he couldn't defend himself. Accusations fly left and right, turning the courtroom into a hot pot of family. Buckle up, because the emotional roller coaster is just getting started. He's not my child's father at all. We don't know who your baby daddy is. And my brother's living with, he has to live with because of it. Now he has to carry this with him. It's affecting our family too much. We need to get this over with ASAP. Because he has guilt because he knows slept he with slept with her. Yeah. Possibility, you know, that he could be the father. He was like even upset about trying to take the test. You know, it's too much. He was upset about taking the test because he know he's not my father. I heard that we'll story see. from a family member. Witness time. Ms. Chambers steps up and spills the tea about how the fam missed a prime DNA test opportunity. Her tales paint a picture of missed calls and mixed signals, stirring up all the family feel. And just when you think everyone said their piece, there's more to come. Miss Chambers, you are Tyrell's daughter's mother. What do you have to add? When she called me and said she had the baby, Tierra was at my house. I said, Tierra, she had the baby one go. What I'm going to the hospital for? Right then and there, y'all could have got a DNA test done on that day. Why didn't Mish call? Why is she going through you all the time? She's a grown woman. You right. Why Excuse did she me? go through me? But y'all don't, don't about like me. Y'all hate me. If you with your child, you be a woman about it. Hold on to your seats, folks. The judge dives into why no one from the Jones clan was vibing with the hospital visit when the baby was born. It's a mix of cold shoulders and eye rolls as past beefs bubble up, focusing on Ms. Brogdon's ex-escapades. The tension's thick enough to cut with a knife. If there was a level of concern or belief one of two brothers could be this child's father, why didn't you go to the hospital? Did you not because go because she has you five didn't believe? Baby daddies it don't matter if she has and it, so it that's been why anybody. that's, that's someone it could have been anybody and it don't matter if I'm running around the crazy and the crazy it thing is and the crazy thing is your So why she ain't tell me when I asked her to take me to my DNA time? It has been determined by this court. Miss Christina Jones is related to Amira Jones. <laughs> Judge Lake kicks off the case by diving into the drama about Riedel Jones's paternity. Ms. Yarlborough and Mr. Jones are teamed up, trying to show that Mr. Triplett isn't really part of the family. They're all about keeping their late dad's music money in the right hands. Meanwhile, Mr. Triplett's there, totally convinced Creadel Jones is his pops too. Let's see how they hash this one out, shall we? In this very courtroom to prove the late Shy Lights member Creadel Jones was your biological father and that Michael Jones is your brother. The results from that case prove Creadel Jones is your father. Stand united together to protect father's legacy and musical estate, proving that Mr. Triplett is not your sibling. Here comes a twist. Mr. Triplett steps up, super sure that he's Creadel's son. He's all about getting a warm welcome once the DNA results drop. Mr. Jones throws in his two cents, totally skeptical, because his family was like a tight-knit club and Mr. Triplett was never mentioned. Plus, he's got those birth certificates signed by Creadel himself as his ace in the hole. Things are heating up. Get ready for the next bit. Mr. Triplett, yes, you state you've 
always known that Mr. Credo Jones is your and you hope that one DNA results are revealed. Ms. Yarbrough and Mr. Jones will welcome you with open arms. Mr. Triplett is your brother. He claims that he's like two weeks older than me. As far as my life, I know my mother and father was always together from 1964 to 1974. We went on trips together. Oh, snap. Mr. Triplett drops a bombshell. His birth cert doesn't name Creadel Jones, which totally clashes with Mr. Jones's documents flaunting dad's signature. This mix-up throws a wrench into the whole are we siblings question, stirring up more mystery around their family ties. And just when you thought it couldn't get more tangled, watch what happens next. So, Mr. Triplett, is Mr. Jones on your birth certificate? I've always been told Creadel was the only father that I've ever had, so. Your entire life. And you were told you had brothers and sisters. Yes. Let's be clear, he is a music legend. Incredible contributions to the music industry. You were told that you were his child. Yes. Things just got real. Ms. Yarlborough isn't holding back, accusing Mr. Triplett of chasing after the cash instead of genuine family bonds. She's all about that deep connection to her dad. Unlike Mr. Triplett, who seems to be eyeing the estate like it's lottery winnings, this clash of intentions is laying down some serious daytime drama vibes. Hang tight, because there's more where that came from. Maybe you think it's a lot of money here. I don't know. You think this is about money. I'm upset because hear this. I hear everybody telling me what they had. And I mean, my mother told me that when we were, he took care of me and my sister. When he went on the road, he sent my mom money. My older sisters and older cousins have memory of him, but I don't. My only memory of him was at 11 years old when he came to visit me and my sister. That's it. Guess what's coming up? Mr. Fred Bugg's music biz whiz, shedding light on just how loaded Creadle Jones's estate really is. Thanks to a lifetime of hits and samples, we're talking big bucks. Fred's lowdown helps paint a picture of why everyone might be so eager to get a piece of the pie. Don't go anywhere. The reveal is just around the corner. We want to understand the value of this estate. Can you shed light on that for us? Sure can. You had a couple of great stand-up singing groups during the 70s. Temptation, Four Top, Shy Lights out of Chicago. Bunch of number one songs on the R&B chart. The amount of uh, sample that has been done throughout the years. Publishing has got to be well, well in, into the millions by now. And now, the moment of truth. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Triplett, Ms. Yarbrough, Mr. Irving Jones, and Mr. Michael Jones, you are related. Oh. <laughs> Oh boy, here we go. Miss Dixon is super ticked off because her hubby Steven keeps denying he's the dad of their kiddo, Anaya. She's been in hot water before for cheating, and now she's on a mission to prove that Steven is indeed the father. You'll want to stick around to see how this soap opera unfolds. Miss Dixon, you are furious that your husband Steven denied fathered your daughter, Tanea. You believe because you cheated in the past, he is holding previous mistake against you. You plan to prove paternity today. Get a load of this. Mr. Hunt is throwing serious shade, doubting he's the father of little Tanaya because he once caught his wife stepping out on him. He's all geared up for the DNA results today, thinking they'll be the make or break for their rocky romance. Oh, the drama is just getting started. Mr. Hunt, you stay caught your wife cheating on you. You are convinced you did father 14-month-old Tanea. You say today's DNA results will determine the future of your marriage. You were ordered by couples court judges Dana and Cutler to appear in my courtroom. I need to know if she's cheating on me. I have concerns if my daughter is mine. <laughs> Whoa, did that just happen? In a juicy bit, Mr. Hunt spills the beans about catching his wife red-handed with another dude in a car right outside their house. Mrs. Dixon doesn't even deny it. She admits she wanted to get caught to give Steven a taste of his own medicine. Grab your popcorn, because there's more where that came from. How did you catch her? Coming home from work, there's this car in the parking lot. So when I walk to the car, I hear the noises and I knock on the window and she blatantly give me the look like, and so what? You, you see what I'm doing? Cheating. So your wife was having sex with another man in a car out front of your house? Yeah. Just when you thought it couldn't get any spicier, Mrs. Dixon drops a bomb. She's pregnant. The timing is super sketchy, which only adds fuel to Mr. Hunt's fire of doubts. This baby drama is turning their marriage into a real-life telenovela. How soon after that did you find out that you're pregnant? A couple of months after that happened. What happens? Who do you tell? Oh, yeah, your I husband? Told, I told my husband. And because when... the due dates from the time I conceived her to the time they said I was due, I didn't sleep with him. Only it was That was a one night. That was a one-time thing. But that's after. all it takes. That's true. Talk about a tangled web. During a heated chat, Mr. Hunt can't make heads or tails of the dates when he was away and when the baby making might have happened. It's a mess of he said, she said, that's turning the courtroom into a circus. And guess what? The circus isn't leaving town just yet. All the everything else just went out 
of the window. I was just happy that I was having a baby girl. And so at what point does the doubt kick in? When I'm thinking about the time and I'm realizing that I, I was gone during the whole month of June. I got back basically July 1st. She's trying to tell me that I like he was when there I left. With, he was there with me on my birthday. So I left how the whole you, month How did June, you get back in July? Back. Hold the phone. There's a new twist. Out of the blue, Mrs. Hunt's aunt throws in her two cents, suggesting that Stephen's brother might be the real daddy because he was hanging around Mrs. Dixon while Stephen was out of town. Yup, the plot thickens and it's getting thick fast. She clearly cheated. Well, he's look, gone. Why look. is he still there? I'm gonna me, take my brother me with me. Cheated. And then me sleeping with someone who's blood related to him. What kind of what characteristics would have I shown you as you being my auntie that I'm that type of person? If I slept with somebody I mean, else you, who ain't I mean, no you're intentionally him, willing to get caught in front of your own house. Clearly choose that you're that no. person. Are you keeping up? Now, Mrs. Dixon's mom gets in on the action. It's wearing up and down that Stephen has got to be the dad because little Tanea is practically his mini-me. She's not buying any of this brother drama. Fasten your seatbelt because there's still more craziness to come. Who do you think is Tanea's biological father? Stephen. And you believe that without a doubt? She looked just like him. And I tell my and mom And then by everything. saying it, brother, no. It's suspicious. You just need to stay and mind your own business. That's you put me in the business, I'm all the way here. Ain't clearly. nobody doing nothing. You well, I'm here. Stuff, you act like you've seen them doing it. Not gonna believe this. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Chris Hunt, you are not the father. Buckle up, folks. Mr. Rash is here today. And oh boy, he's not just here to chat about the weather. He's got a bone to pick, claiming his wife, Ms. Fuentes, has taken a few too many romantic detours, which is seriously messing with his peace of mind about whether he's the dad of their two munchkins. Stick around, tea is about to spill. Mr. Rash, you are here today seeking the result paternity test for your two children. You claim your wife, Ms. Fuentes, has cheated on you repeatedly. You say she once left for another man, slept with five brothers from the same family, and even had the name of another guy tattoo on her body. Yikes, things just got real. Ms. Fuentes drops a bombshell. Yeah, she cheated. Plot twist. She's never really been head over heels with Mr. Rash. To thicken the plot, he's dragged another dude into court who might be the daddy. Grab your popcorn. It's about to get wild. Now, Ms. Fuentes, you don't deny you've cheated over the years, but you claim your husband was really your type. Correct. And though you love him, you've never really been in love with yes, him. Yes, ma'am. Today, you've also brought another man to court who is waiting out who you believe could also be the father of one of your children. Hold on to your socks. They're about to be knocked off. Mr. Rash found some spicy texts on Ms. Fuentes' phone, sparking a showdown about their rocky romance. What's next? You guessed it. More fireworks. Found out that she's cheating on me through text messages that she had in her phone, <laughs> people on Craigslist, you know, incriminating messages, something that should never, ever been. We work together. It doesn't we matter. Not, no, even it when we work together. How even when we work together. together. Makes... They said about her hooking up with them. I mean, right so there. Did you confront her? Yeah, I confront her. Oh, snap! Mr. Rash tells all about playing Mr. Mom for half a year because Ms. Fuentes was off the grid parenting-wise. She's not having any of it, though. Don't go anywhere. Next bit is a doozy. I did take them for six months because I felt like she wasn't being a mother. She wanted to sit there and, no, and go out and have sex that, and drink. That's and, what he wanted to and think. And go have fun and party so and stuff was, like that. You and took then it they, on. Damn, I was there even with your one. doubt. I was there from day one. They're tattooed to my arm. Here comes a heart tugger with a twist. The judge points out how Mr. Rash has been the superhero dad. Doubts or no doubts. But wait, there's more. He's financially in it to win it too. What's the next curveball? Just you wait. Mr. Rash, have the children. You're raising them as your own. Yes, he went and but all me the while, even while you're caring for them for six months and stepping up to the plate and thinking that you're keeping them away from their mother. That I mean, just because of all the cheating that she's done. I mean, like, regardless perfect. that I don't want them to think any different of me. Cue the dramatic music. Enter Mr. Judd. Potential dad numero deuce. Admit yes, they had a fling, but the timing's fuzzy. Was it a parental home run or a strikeout? The suspense is eliminating me. Let's find out. Did you have sex with Miss Fuente? Yes, Your Honor. What was the nature of your relationship? Pretty much just family, friend. Do you believe you're her child's father? Not really. Don't look like me at all. Looks don't matter. She can take after my family. But she looks the like time me. of conception matters. You understand that, that the time the child was conceived, you were sleeping with her. Correct. And here's the big reveal. Drum roll, please. When it comes to two-year-old Gabriella, Mr. Mr. Judd, you are the father. Oh my God. 
here we go. So, Judge Lake kicks off the drama by chatting with Ms. Thompson, who's all riled up because, after her brother kicked the bucket, Ms. Lee started chasing the family for cash. Ms. Thompson's on a mission to prove her late bro is not the daddy of Ms. Lee's kid, little Navaya. Strap in, folks, because things are about to get real juicy. Ms. Thompson, you say that after your brother's sudden death just months ago, the defendant began harassing family for financial benefits, and you are here to defend his honor by proving he is not the biological father of her three-month daughter, Nevaeh. And bam, just like that, Ms. Lee fires back. She's 100% sure that the plaintiff's bro, Kevin Harris, is the father of her munchkin. She's staking her reputation on the DNA test, proving her right. Hold on to your popcorn, because Ms. Thompson is about to lose her cool. Uh, Ms. Lee, you state plaintiff's brother, Kevin Harris, is 100% your daughter's father, and say day's result, prove your case, clear your name. Oh boy, did she just drop a bombshell. Ms. Thompson spills the tea about her brother, labeling Ms. Lee as a money-hungry, impulsive liar, and the crowd goes wild. You can almost hear the gasps. But wait, there's more drama brewing just around the corner. My, my brother was 100% positive that he was not the father. He stated that Ms. Lee was a money-hungry, compulsive liar. What else did he tell you? <laughs> well, um, he told me that basically she was just one of the ladies he was sleeping with at the time, and she claimed to be pregnant by him. But he did not believe that. No. You're not gonna believe this one. Ms. Lee recounts the magical moment she thinks she got pregnant, saying her body just knew right after the deed. The judge and everyone else are scratching their heads because, come on, really? But stick around, because the judge's next question is a doozy. He called me, and I was hanging out with friends at a hotel. And he came and got me. We went to the house. We did what we did after that, and my body reacted. So you were pregnant the And I went to the to the store the next day, and I got two pregnancy tests, and they both came positive. Called him, and he said, oh, that's not my baby, because he had multiple women. Grab the tissues. It's about to get a tad emotional. Ms. Thompson talks about the tough times following her brother's untimely exit from the world. Turns out Ms. Lee was allegedly snatching stuff from his house right after he passed. It's a real mess, folks. And just when you think it can't get any messier, oh, it does. That Ms. Lee and another one of his acquaintances went to his house and started collecting belongings that belonged to him. It was the principal behind that because if she would have came to us and just said, hey, you know, I want something to remember him by because we probably wanted a Why piece of him. Why would I be him. dead in the way y'all said? Like I never said. Liked I didn't it. know you at that time. You still don't know. Exactly. She would have came to us in the proper way. Hold the phone. The DNA results are in. And guess what? It has been determined by this court. Nevaeh Harris is related to Ms. Thompson. That is your brother's child. You still on Strap in, folks. This one's a doozy. Mrs. Gellinser steps up to the plate, spilling the tea that she thinks her husband is the dad of one twin and her boyfriend is the papa of the other. She paints a picture of her life in total chaos since finding out she was going to have twins, muddling through the who's the daddy drama. And guess what? Roller coaster is just taking off. Miss Glenster, you have opened your case today because you say your life has been in turmoil the moment you learned you were pregnant with twins. You are convinced your husband fathered your eight eight-month-old son Richard also believed your boyfriend, Mr. Stacy, fathered your son's twin sister, Raylan. Oh boy, here we go. Mr. Ramey steps into the ring, swearing up and down he's not the father of either kid, while Mr. Stacy is all in, claiming he's the daddy to both. Talk about a plot twist in the making. It's like a soap opera, but wait, there's more popcorn-worthy drama ahead. Mr. Ramey, you state there is no way you fathered either one of your wife twins and intend to prove that today. Mr. Stacy, you believe you fathered both twins. Just when you thought it couldn't get wilder, Mrs. Gelser recounts a real soap opera scenario involving her, her hubby, and her side guy that might have led to the twins being con It's got all the spice of a daytime drama, including a confession from Mr. Ramey about a risque rendezvous while her boyfriend was just in the next room. Fasten your seatbelts, because this tale spirals even crazier. December 15th, John, Keisha, Scotty, and I was at the house. Scotty and John were working on the bathroom to get it fixed up. After they had gotten the floor put down, Scotty went into our room and John said, come look at the bathroom. He said, we gotta talk about the kids, close the door, and then one thing led to another and we had sex. Next, hold on to your socks because they're about to be knocked off. We dive into the messy love triangle, or is it a square, with Mrs. Gelnser, her husband, and her boyfriend sharing too many close encounters in too short a time. It's a mix-up that makes you want to ask for a scoreboard to keep track of the players, and you won't believe the curveball coming next. And then, Miss Glenster, when do you reconnect with Mr. State? After John and Keisha had left the house that night, went and picked him up from walking up the road and brought him back to the house and told him I was sorry and asked him to stay. And then how soon after that do you start having 
having sex with Mr. Stacy. It was that night. As the truth slowly unravels, everyone's on edge. Mrs. Gelnser breaks down the timeline of her pregnancy right alongside her bedroom Olympics with both contenders. This key piece of info ties the conception, dates back to her tales of passion, suggesting either dude could be daddy. But hang tight, there's a revelation just around the corner that'll really stir the pot. It was September 17th was the final due date. And from that, you calculated or they delayed a window of concept. When they gave me the due date, they also gave me a paper. Baby A, which was Richard, was five weeks and two days. Raylan was five weeks, four days. That was how many weeks, days after you had slept with both of them? I was five and a half weeks. Grab your snacks. The main event is about to be unleashed. It has been determined by this court. The biological father is Mr. Stacy.